Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I recently decided to create like an educational series about feeder insects, but instead of just me talking about them, I thought I would do that in an audio clip over all of my animals eating that type of insect. So the last one was waxworms, I'll include it up here, and this one is hornworms. As I stay in every feeding video, some of my animals actually a lot of my animals are rescued and or have special needs in particular with the leopard geckos who have neurological disorders and birth defects you might notice that they are a little bit different looking a little bit wonky in their behavior and that is why i will indicate as such on the screen or in the audio clip but i just wanted to be put out there that they're just acting a bit different because they are a bit different and with that let's go ahead and wait please subscribe hit the notification bell and with that let's go ahead and get started a hornworm is also known as a tobacco or tomato hornworm. They are a green caterpillar with a horn on their back end and small spots on their body. We'll get to this horn in a bit. It's not actually a horn, but it kind of is, but it's not. They are the larval form of a very large moth called a hawk moth or a hummingbird moth. When I say very large, I mean these moths are very large and also the sound they make when like they crash into things or when they flap their wings is terrifying in the darkness. Aaron thought it was a bat, if that is any, any comfort to you about what these cute little caterpillars turn into. They come out of their eggs super duper small and they grow rapidly with ample food source and warmth. So if you order them from Josh's Frogs, for example, which is where I get mine, you can order them at a really small size or you can order them already big enough to feed to your animals. Regardless, if you keep them warm and fed, they will grow very fast to their full grown size, which is like huge. It's, it's too big to feed to a lot of reptiles. You'd have to feed them to bigger animals like a bearded dragon or a blue tongue skink. When hornworms reach their really big size, they will often stop eating, become really stiff and start to pupate. They get really pale and then eventually a brown shell forms around them and it's basically them in a chrysalis. If the hornworm is floppy, dark or patchy colored and stops growing, it is dead. If it forms a chrysalis around it, it is not dead. It is just transforming into a moth. Regardless of whether or not the hornworm is a hornworm or it's in a chrysalis or it is a moth, you cannot release them. It is illegal to do so in the United States. So please do not release them. They are a invasive species and they hurt a lot of crops. So just don't do it. If the hornworm is too big to feed off or if it pupates or if it turns into a moth the only thing you can do is freeze it and unfortunately that will kill it and then you'll have to dispose of it now you could just let it live in your house for its short life period but that's up to you Whenever I have any that turn, it's pretty rare that I do because I have bearded dragons. So when they get too big for my leopard geckos, I just feed them to my bearded dragons. But whenever I have any that get too large or they start to pupate and then they turn into a moth, I just let them live in a spare enclosure and just feed them honey water. And then, you know, they live out their short lifespan as a moth. But yeah, you cannot release them in the wild. If you are worried about them growing too fast, what you can do is keep them in a colder area of your home. You can keep them near a window, or if it's during the summer, you can keep them near an AC vent, or you can put them in the refrigerator. However, you cannot keep them in the refrigerator for more than a couple days because they will die. So just keep that in mind. If you want them to stop growing so fast, but you don't wanna kill them, don't keep them cold for too long. Now, when you order hornworms, they should come with the food that they need to grow. Like when you get them from Josh's Frogs, they'll come in a container with all the food that they need. So you don't have to make food for them. All right, now let's talk about their nutritional facts. As a feeder insect, they're made up of 85% moisture, 4.6% calcium, 9% protein, and 3.07% fat. Now those stats are going to change depending on where you look. That's the case with all feeder insects. They will change a little bit here and there depending on the site you go to, but that's what I have gathered. Because hornworms are super high in moisture at 85% and low in protein at 9%, they should be fed as a treat and not as part of a staple diet. Like you wouldn't choose them to be like a dubia roach is a replacement in a diet, for example. But they are really great to offer as part of a varied diet because they are full of moisture and full of calcium. And because they have such a great calcium content, you don't actually have to dust them with calcium, which is why you see me offering them without any calcium powder. 
Now let's talk about safely feeding them to your reptiles. So hornworms can get really, really big and you don't wanna offer hornworms to your reptiles unless they are smaller than the space between your reptile or amphibian's eyes. So for example, when you feed them to a leopard gecko, you see me tapping Mira. <laughs> when you feed them to a leopard gecko, make sure that it's smaller than the space between their eyes. That way they can properly swallow it. Another thing that I want to address is that they do have a horn on the back end of their bodies, but that horn is not dangerous. It is actually really like malleable and soft and bendable, and it will not pierce your gecko or hurt your gecko whatsoever. A lot of people have concerns about that, but don't worry. The larger that a hornworm gets, the, I guess, more dangerous they are because they do have quite powerful bite in the front of their body. Now, this typically isn't a problem for any reptiles or amphibians. However, if you are concerned about it, you can crush their heads. I do this for my amphibians just to be safe because they don't really have like teeth for cutting up a hornworm. They just kind of swallow food whole. So just to be safe, I do crush the head when it comes to my amphibians. But for other reptiles, I just feed them whole and not crushed. I really love feeding them to my reptiles and amphibians because I get such a great feeding response from all of them. A lot of animals are really fond of hornworms and it just makes feeding time so fun because you get a really great response and like even the pickiest of eaters will turn their diet around when it comes to hornworms. I also really love hornworms because you can order them at a very small size and that means you can feed them to animals that are really small. Like for example, they're not in this video, but the really tiny hornworms I can feed to my firebelly toads and like the largest of them I can feed to my fiance's blue tongue skink. I also love how easy they are to feed and take care of because all you do is literally buy them and then they already come with food. You keep them at room temperature, they will grow really well and there's not a lot of dying off either when it comes to hornworms that I've noticed. And I get my hornworms from Josh's Frogs. If you want to get hornworms from there, you can actually use my discount code to get 15% off. But the discount code is Jessica15, J-E-S-S-I-C-A-1-5. And whenever I get them in the mail, there's like hardly ever any dead ones. And throughout their life cycle, I don't really have any that die off. So it's just really nice to have insects that don't die before you get to feed them off. One last thing I want to note is that during this feeding video, and I should have said this at the beginning, but I didn't, during this feeding video, I am only offering one hornworm to each of the animals, and that is just for the purpose of conserving time. Like, for example, Roku would get multiple hornworms. Most of my Leos will get, like, two small to medium ones or, like, one really, like, larger one. Nymeria here is going to get two just because I didn't see her really eat the first one and I wanted to have her on camera. But yeah, I normally offer, like, one to two, so if there's only one offered on screen. It's just to save time. So just keep that in mind. But I couldn't save enough time. I have some extra clips still. So I'm going to play some music while you guys enjoy them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!